Hello everybody, once again this is G, and today I want to show you this little invention here, which was originally developed by Fredo, check out the link in the description below, and it's called the Cell Tuner. And what we're doing here is basically creating a lot of fresh water out of salt water, but we're not using any uh, desalinators or anything like that. And specifically, this is hot salt water. And uh, that's a very important distinction because for cold salt water, probably do not want to use this process. So the idea here is that we've got hot salt water coming in and only a certain portion gets allocated to here, turns to steam. Steam goes into this ventile and then comes into contact with these cooler tiles here made out of airlocks. You can also use steel um, bunker tiles, things like that. Also, there's a temperature plate. And then after that, it condenses and teleports up to here. And sometimes a bit of it can teleport up to here. I think I'll probably have to fix this, but I built this in survival, and so I don't want to change it up at this time. But maybe I'll lab it up and see if I can get rid of this little problem. But anyways, that's not a big deal. This can just drip over, no big deal. And then any salt that gets created, which most of the time doesn't get created at all, it just disappears. But if it does get created, it get taken out this way, kind of diagonally. You can see here this thing can reach in there. Anyways, I got a little overlay here so you can see what I'm talking about. Salt removal this way. Oh, there it goes. He's getting some salt. And there's a pipe here from this pump to the electrolyzer. And we're just feeding hot water at about 90 degrees which is fine. And then you can cool the gases that come off the electrolyzer because that deletes a lot of heat. So it's more efficient to cool gases coming off the electrolyzer than it is to cool the water coming into the electrolyzer. And if you want to know more about the liquid teleport, there's a link in the description below as well for that. And you can see here, we got a little liquid lock here and there's a vacuum. So that's kind of convenient. And I built this by digging out a vacuum here first. It just makes it easier for everything. What I want to show you is a little bit of the automation here. And you can see this controls the thermal aqua tuner. Basically, if you're using polluted water, you want to set this to some reasonable number. I put it at minus one. But in this particular case, if you look at the plumbing, I'm actually using super coolant. And I started with polluted water and then I thought, what the heck? We're like in a very uh, built out base. I might as well put some super coolant in here. So that's done. But polluted water works just as well. Yeah, so pretty simple plumbing. And then back to the automation. The second thing that controls the aqua tuner is to make sure that there's enough salt water here because if there's not enough, the aqua tuner is not gonna run. And it basically heats up this petroleum that's in here and it cools. Once again, if you look at the plumbing, it cools with this thermium pipe. It cools this airflow tile and it cools this door. And this door is made of steel, but you could make it out of thermium. And then there's a temp shift plate made out of diamond. Same thing here. Again, this is made of steel. And again, you could use thermium or you could use steel, but it'll just be less efficient. Also, this guy over here, this weight plate, he's made of thermium. And it's set to above 100 kilos. And the point of that is not to have to run this auto sweeper all the time. So it only runs when there's enough salt here to go ahead and take it away. And also, there's a buffer here. So when the salt is picked up of this um, weight plate, this thing doesn't turn off immediately. It has five seconds to operate. And then this door opens when there's about 10 kilos of salt water over here. And again, the idea here is to just kind of regulate the flow. So we don't let too much salt water in. And we also don't let too little because if it's too little, it could potentially boil off and steam could come out this way, which we don't want. And if there's too much, it's just going to make it harder to boil. So. I found that two kilos over here and 10 kilos over here is the right amount. Runtime on a cycle tuner. You can see here it's about a quarter of the time. And that is because it's using super coolant. If you use polluted water, it'll run more frequently. And if you look up here, this is where the salt water is coming from. And it just comes, rolls down this way. So it just. Basically, this way you don't have to have let's say, the uh, salt geyser over here, even though you could. But it would be very inconvenient for me to work around this particular one because I have all this other stuff here built out. 
And this is from, you can see here, from Tungsten Melter. That's from the Abyssalite Melter. But anyways, so yeah, basically after that, this pipe just simply goes to the electrolyzers. And, pardon the lag, <laughs> this base is pretty big. Anyways, these electrolyzers are definitely nothing optimal. This is way from, uh, this is from way back. Still works, but I figured I'd just plop this in here and see how it goes. And I can tell you it works much better than these guys down here. Yeah, this is, um, this is dupe operated. It's kind of pointless. So this works much better. Yeah, that's basically it. And it works really well. So I suggest you go and build one yourself if you like, if you haven't already. And that's all I got for you right now. This has been Greasy Hammer. And if you like this video, then smash that like button. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.